Throughout the course of history, men and women have lived and died. Looking back from this place in time, it is clear that people long ago really did some really dumb things. And in order to understand how they died, we must first understand how they lived. These are the stories of how they died. If I were to ask you to name some of history's greatest inventors, which names come to mind? Do those names include Benjamin Franklin, Albert Einstein, or Alexander Graham Bell? What if I were to ask you which inventor made it possible for you to change the channel on your TV or turn on the lights in your home? Would your answer be Thomas Edison? This is the story of a man who was decades ahead of his time. He envisioned the exploration of solar energy and the power of water. He foresaw cell phones and satellites, and his work started an industrial revolution at the turn of the 20th century. But he died penniless and alone in a hotel room. This is the story of Nikola Tesla, the man who has been labeled the forgotten genius. Nikola Tesla was born in July of 1856 during a fierce and frightful thunderstorm in what is modern-day Croatia. During his birth, the midwife looked at his mother and stated, this child will be a child of darkness, to which his mother replied, no, he will be a child of light. Nikola was the youngest of five children born to Milutin Tesla and Juka Mandic. Nikola's father was a Serbian Orthodox priest, and his mother Juka was uneducated. Nonetheless, she was highly intelligent, and she often invented household appliances such as the mechanical egg beater. In 1863, Tesla's older brother Dane was killed in a horseback riding accident. The seven-year-old Tesla was so troubled from the tragedy that he soon reported seeing visions of light patterns. It was unknown at the time, but this was the first sign of what would become a lifelong mental illness for the young Tesla. As he grew and matured, Nikola demonstrated extraordinary brilliance which bordered on the point of obsession. He had the ability to memorize entire books and he picked up languages with ease eventually becoming fluent in eight different languages. By the age of 17, Nikola had contracted cholera and it nearly killed him. His father, who had wanted him to become a priest, promised the young Tesla that if he survived the illness, he would allow his son to study at the Technical University of Graz in Austria. Miraculously, Tesla survived and eventually he enrolled at the university where he had planned to specialize in engineering, mathematics, and physics. Tesla worked hard at university, often toiling away from 3 in the morning to 11 in the evening. He was a star pupil, and he often found himself questioning and debating the efficiency of the direct current motors that were demonstrated in his class. Tesla felt that the motors had significant design flaws, and he would spend the next six years of his life thinking about the direct current motors. Unfortunately, he developed an addiction to gambling, and he ended up gambling away all of his tuition money. The guilt and the shame that he felt caused him to suffer the first of what would become many nervous breakdowns. He dropped out of school before he could finish his degree. In 1881, Tesla moved to Budapest. One day, while he was walking through the park with a friend, he had a vision, a vision of a motor that used rotating magnetic fields created by two alternating currents. Tesla drew a sketch of this vision in the dirt with a stick. In due course, he moved to Paris, where he got a job with the Continental Edison Company. 
It was there that he made repairs to direct current power systems. But Tesla could not stop thinking about the use of alternating current power. In secret, he built a prototype of an alternating current induction motor. Unfortunately, he was unable to market the invention to anyone in Europe. Two years later, Tesla packed his belongings and caught the next boat bound for the United States. The journey across the Atlantic Ocean was merciless. There was a mutiny on board the ship, and Tesla lost most of his luggage and practically all of his money during the voyage. Tesla arrived in New York City with a recommendation letter and only four cents in his pocket on June 6, 1884. He started work as an engineer at Thomas Edison's Manhattan headquarters. He worked there for a year where he impressed Edison with his diligence and imagination. Tesla explained the inefficiency of Edison's direct current electrical powerhouses. He also pointed out that Edison's lamps were weak and inefficient when supplied by direct current. The direct current system had a serious drawback in that it could not be transported more than two miles without the loss of voltage, which meant that the direct current system would require power stations built every two miles. But because Edison held all the patents for DC systems, he tasked Tesla to come up with an idea that would improve the design of the DC dynamo, for which Edison allegedly promised to pay a $50,000 bonus. After months of experimenting and the presentation of a solution, Edison hesitated at the request for money, stating, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. Tesla promptly quit and took a job digging ditches for $2 a day. Between the years of 1887 and 1888, Tesla was granted more than 30 patents for his inventions. But his greatest achievement came with the invention of the AC power induction motor. This motor made the delivery of electricity more efficient and allowed for greater control of electrical output. In May 1888, George Westinghouse, head of the Westinghouse Electric Company in Pittsburgh and a huge competitor of Edison's, contracted with Tesla to use the patent rights to Tesla's polyphase system of alternating current generators, transformers, and motors. It was this transaction that triggered a huge power struggle between Edison's direct current systems and the Tesla Westinghouse alternating current method. This became known as the War of the Currents. Because Edison owned all of the patents to the DC power systems, he was greatly concerned that he would lose out if Westinghouse and Tesla's system proved to be more efficient. In 1890, in order to demonstrate the dangers of alternating current, Thomas Edison launched a misinformation campaign to display that AC current was dangerous. In order to prove his point, he arranged the public electrocution of stray dogs, cats, and even horses. He also arranged for a circus elephant named Topsy to be electrocuted, and even filmed a movie about it called Electrocuting an Elephant. This stunt was intended to show how dangerous the Westinghouse standard of electricity could be. But the joke was on Edison. Tesla and Westinghouse were awarded the contract that lit the 1891 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, and they partnered along with General Electric to install AC generators at Niagara Falls, creating the first ever modern power station. Ultimately, Tesla's design won the War of the Currents, but there was an immense cost of litigation and competition. Dreading the possibility of ruin, Westinghouse pleaded with Tesla for relief from the royalties that he was promised. Tesla, who was always compassionate and very grateful to Westinghouse, tore up the royalty contract and walked away from millions. He sold the patent rights in their entirety to Westinghouse. Tesla used the money that he made from selling his patents to set up his own independent laboratory. During the 1890s, Tesla invented electric oscillators, he improved lights, and invented a powerful coil that was capable of generating high voltages and frequencies. This coil led to new forms of light such as neon and fluorescent, and made it possible to send and receive radio signals. 
In mid-1891, he patented his famous Tesla coil. Tesla became extremely well known for his inventions. He called the old Waldorf Astoria home for many years, and when he was at the height of his notoriety, he planned elaborate dinners, inviting famous people who later witnessed spectacular electrical experiments in his laboratory. He was visited at his laboratory by Mark Twain, who was a great fan of his work. He even promoted some of Tesla's inventions and helped with experiments, including the first ever photograph that was lit entirely by phosphorescent light. And then, in 1895, disaster struck. Tesla's New York laboratory caught fire, destroying years of notes, equipment, and prototypes. Tesla temporarily relocated to Colorado Springs and continued working on an idea for a global communications network. Nikola Tesla was able to patent the basic system of radio in 1896. His published diagrams illustrated all of the basic elements needed for the radio transmitter. And in 1897, Tesla filed for U.S. patents for these inventions. In the year 1900, Tesla returned to New York where he met with J.P. Morgan to propose his idea of a wireless global network. Morgan invested $150,000 to build a giant transmission tower. Tesla quickly hired the noted architect Stanford White to begin building a global communications network centered on a giant tower at Warden Cliff on Long Island. This tower was planned to be the first global broadcast system, transmitting both signals and electricity without wires to any point on the earth and Tesla wanted that energy to be free. But then, in 1901, two events coincided that caused major setbacks for Tesla. The first setback was a countrywide recession. Money was tight everywhere. The other event came from the Italian inventor Guillermo Marconi, who had unexpectedly demonstrated the use of radio waves for long-distance transmission. Tesla whinged a bit, but overall was not concerned about Marconi, because Tesla knew that the Italian was using 17 of his patents. But when Marconi was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics a few years later, Tesla sued Marconi. Unfortunately, the court case favored Marconi and the commercial damage was done. Back on Long Island, Morgan and Tesla continued to disagree as to the final use of the tower at Warden Cliff, and eventually Morgan withdrew his investments around the year 1907. Without the financial backing of Morgan and other investors throwing their money behind Marconi, construction of the tower ceased. The following year, Tesla abandoned the project at Warden Cliff. The incomplete tower was demolished in 1917 for wartime security. As Tesla grew older, he began to lead a more isolated existence, dedicating all of his energy to the pursuit of science. In 1915, Tesla and Edison were nominated to share the Nobel Prize for Physics. It has been alleged that Tesla refused the prize because he did not want to share the award with Edison. It was around this time that Tesla started showing signs of obsessive compulsive disorder. He became obsessed with the number three and fearful of germs. He also began to despise jewelry, especially pearl earrings. However, his obsession with the number three and fastidious washing were dismissed as the eccentricities of a brilliant mind. In 1931, on Tesla's 75th birthday, the inventor was featured on the cover of Time magazine. On this occasion, Tesla received more than 70 letters, including one from Albert Einstein congratulating him on this momentous occasion. Tesla lived the last few decades of his life in the New Yorker Hotel, working on new inventions as his mental health continued to fade away. Toward the end of his life, Nikola Tesla's ideas became more and more illusory. One of the most interesting examples came on his 78th birthday when he had claimed that he had invented a death ray. In the fall of 1937, Tesla suffered a severe injury. While he was crossing the street, he was struck by a taxicab and thrown to the ground. 
the event severely damaged his back and broke a few of his ribs. But as he never consulted a doctor after the incident, the full extent of the injury was unknown. Since he was 81 at the time, he never fully recovered. He spent his final years feeding and caring for the many pigeons throughout the city. Nikola Tesla died alone in his hotel room on January 7, 1943. He was 86 years old. After an examination by doctors, it was discovered that the cause of death was most likely coronary thrombosis. A state funeral was held at St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York City and more than 2,000 people attended the service. Nikola Tesla's body was cremated in Ardsley on the Hudson and his ashes were entombed inside a golden sphere, which was Tesla's favorite shape. They are on permanent display at the Tesla Museum in Belgrade. Immediately following the announcement of Tesla's death, the U.S. government moved quickly to obtain all of Tesla's property and possessions. The director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, declared Tesla's work most secret and in the U.S. government's view, it was extremely important to get a hold of his work before any foreign powers, especially the Soviet Union. In the later part of 1943, the United States Supreme Court ruled that Marconi's most important patent was invalid, and they recognized Nikola Tesla's more significant contribution as the father of radio technology. Tesla's alternating current induction motor is heralded to be one of the ten greatest discoveries of all time. His work started the Industrial Revolution at the turn of the century. Tesla brought light to the world in more ways than one, and it turns out that his mother's prophecy had been true. He really was a child of light. I would like to say thank you to Zach Garner who suggested the story of Nikola Tesla. I learned so much about his brilliant and extraordinary life, and I hope that all of you watching this did too. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please help my channel grow by giving this video a thumbs up, clicking that subscribe button, and sharing this video with your friends. Be sure to turn on the notifications so you never miss a new story, and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.